This is probably my favorite fact because it never doesn't freak people out. So like I said, moose are better swimmers than your mental health is prepared for. And they'll dive to the bottom of bodies of water to eat underwater plants and vegetation. If this antler tank stuck to lakes, it'd be fine. The problem starts when they swim from island to island or in bays. Because that puts them right in the range of the most oppressive force in the entire ocean. Those homicidal ocean orioles are the only natural marine predators of the moose. And since the moose is completely defenseless in the water, it's basically a free kill. But the real problem is that it doesn't happen often enough for the moose to recognize the water as a dangerous place. Moose respond to threats by learning, which is why they'll do the dash if they smell a wolf or a bear or if they see scavenger birds like ravens. But since orcas don't regularly eat moose, they haven't learned, which ironically makes it easier for moose to get murked by a steroid murder dolphin. I also just want to point out how accurate this is. Orcas don't see humans as a food source, so a killer whale would actually bundy a full-grown moose and then let you live with a memory. But by far, the worst part is the only reason moose even swim in inlets or between islands is to find food. That's like finding a shortcut to stop a shop and getting clapped by an equality symbol on the way. It's not often, but this does happen. But if it makes the moose feel better, this shark eats polar bear and reindeer and nobody talks about it. You know what? You're right, that wasn't fair. I probably should explain. This shark has been known to eat polar bear and reindeer. It's a Greenland shark and it's kind of a well-known weirdo. They can live for 400, 500 years, but they don't hit puberty until 150. They can grow to 21 feet long and weigh over 2,000 pounds. And most of them are blind thanks to a parasite that feeds off their eyeballs. You probably don't care about that. So yeah, the Greenland shark has been found with the remains of seals, polar bears, and reindeer. One shark was even found choking to death on a piece of moose off the coast of Newfoundland. They saved it, by the way. There's even some reports of them allegedly having a human leg in their stomach. But the Greenland shark lives life incredibly slow and the fastest they'll ever go is about one and a half miles per hour which is why this fossil of a shark is usually a scavenger meaning any polar bear or reindeer they eat was already dead at the very least extremely sick or dying but that's still giving this molasses guppy a lot of credit because their secret to living long is doing it painfully slow in fact it's believed the only way they eat living prey like seals is by catching them while they're asleep but greenland sharks are perfectly harmless unless you eat them greenland shark meat is highly toxic meaning it's the only time where you die when you bite the shark it doesn't stop people from trying but yeah mummy shark ain't too bad So there might be an actual reason for this. Octopus are one of the smartest things in the ocean, and oftentimes they'll team up with predatory fish to hunt together. And a lot of the time during these two player hunts, the octopus will Mike Tyson the fish they're supposed to be working with. When an octopus punches a fish during a hunt, the fish can lose its position and even miss out on an opportunity to catch food. Some scientists believe that by sucker punching the fish, the octopus is keeping his partner from cheating him out of his share. There's also a chance that the fish already stole from the octopus in the past, so this is just the octopus's way of keeping him in line. Of course, there's also times where the octopus isn't hunting and just throw hands for no reason. Some species have the intelligence of a two-year-old, meaning octopus are not only smart enough to get frustrated, they can also do things purely out of spite. Sometimes the generational trauma of being an octopus just makes you want to slap box a fish. It'd be like that. Not sure what this weird looking fish is, but this is why I won't swim in canal- That, my friend, is a sheep's head. Now you might be wondering why this fish looks like it should still be pissed about the Euro Cup. It's cause they use those teeth to grind up shellfish, mussels, and clams, and in some places you can hear them munching away. You can find them in Cape Cod and Massachusetts, through Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, all the way down to Brazil. Also, they have a bad habit of stealing bait from fishermen. Luckily, they're not super aggressive and they don't normally bite people unless you literally ask for it. But with a mouthpiece like that, they don't need to touch you to do damage to your mental. Also, the saltwater sheephead is apparently sweet tasting when cooked, but I wouldn't know because I do not have the strength to try one. Also, they're not the only fish with a dental plan. This is a trigger fish, and like the sheep said, they look like they only exist because of a drunk dare. But unlike the sheep said, the trigger fish lives up to its name by being highly aggressive and territorial. And the worst of all is the titan trigger fish, which is mean enough to send you to bed with more stitches than you woke up with. Now hear me out, but he looks just like... So apparently there's some people that didn't know clams could actually do this. Some clams, like scallops, use jet propulsion and move by flexing the muscles that join their shells. Doing this squirts water out the side, which launches the scallop. Now they usually only do this when something like a starfish tries to eat them, but it takes a massive amount of energy for them to do this, so the scallop moves a couple feet and basically has to spend the rest of the day resting. Like Yeah, that's a pangolin. We used to think they were related to armadillos and anteaters, but it turns out their closest relatives are in the carnivora group, which means this turtle gerbil is actually closer to grizzlies and hyenas than they are to armadillos. They use those huge claws to break through armadillo mounts, and because of those claws, they often walk on two feet, which is why they look a lot like a geriatric that can't find their glasses in the morning. Some, like the Indian pangolin, will curl into a ball whenever they're in danger. And yes, they're real-life sand slash. They're also by far the most polite thing I've ever seen. It looks like he's patiently waiting for his mom to get off the phone so he can ask her for $10 for the book fair. Baby pangolins are called panga pups and they spend the first couple of weeks riding on their mother's back. There's about 8 flavors of these scale puppies. This tree pangolin has a prehensile tail that lets him eat while hanging from a branch. But since we can't have nice things, they're the second most trafficked mammal in the world behind humans. 
It's because people either eat them or use their scales to make pee-pee pills or other nonsense like that. Also, they may or may not have had something to do with a certain virus. On an unrelated note, they have boobs. I don't know why that surprises me, but it does. To end on a wholesome note, here's a pangolin taking a mud bath. I actually love this story. So like I said, this pine cone with legs is the second most trafficked mammal in the world because people either use it for bush meat or they use its scales for traditional medicine. To the point where sometimes poachers are caught with legit hundreds of dead pangolins in their freezer. Yeah, they got it bad. Enter the pangolin men. They're a group of charity workers that dedicated their lives to saving this animal artichoke. These men from Harare, Zimbabwe rehabilitate pangolins that were rescued from poachers. They feed them, they walk them, they basically treat them like their children. And to raise awareness, they even had a photo shoot with them and if you haven't seen it before, you're very welcome. The Tiki Highwood Foundation they work at have rescued and taken in hundreds of pangolins that would have been slaughtered or boxed up if they hadn't. And as the bodyguard for this endangered animal, they walk this pangolin the same way you'd walk a child to his first day of preschool. Not only are they saving the lives of these little Pokemon, they're also raising awareness because the pangolin is by far the most disrespected animal that most people have never heard of before. Also in 2016, it became illegal to trade them internationally. They're still down pretty bad, but they're doing way better than they were 20 years ago. And if you're ever having a bad day, go ahead and Google pangolin men photo shoot. If this doesn't make you feel something, go lease a soul because you don't own one. Here's something you might not have seen before. This is a spirit bear. It's not a polar bear, it's actually an American black bear found in British Columbia. They're not albino, but these Caucasian carnivores have a mutation that causes melanin to not be produced. And this mutation is recessive, meaning two normal black bears can actually create a white bear as long as each parent has the gene. Which is probably awkward because there's no mori for bears. I'm trying to explain that to a papa bear. And unlike almost every other mutation, this mistake actually helps them out because spirit bears can catch more fish. And that's because white fur is way harder to spot under water than black fur. I'm just, you know, putting this out there. The same gene that causes black bears to come out cotton causes red hair in humans. Only difference is I'm pretty sure that bears have a soul. Also, it turns out a lot of these bears have preferences towards their own color. White kermode bears usually go for other whites and black typically stays with black. And yes, I'm still talking about bears, don't be that guy. I believe this is because the bear cubs imprint on their mother's fur, so they end up seeking out the same color for their mamas because you really are your daddy's son. These ghost bears are sacred to indigenous people found in British Columbia, and according to some, this snow white bear was made to remind us that the earth was once covered in ice and glaciers. And they're limited edition because it's believed there's about 400 of these vanilla bears left. But if you really want to see one, you could probably find one in the Great Bear Rainforest in Canada. Just remember to social distance because they may be whitewashed bleach bears, but they will still revenant your ass. Now what if I told you there's an animal you should fear more than moose? Because as ridiculous as this overgrown swamp donkey is, I personally think camels are on another f***ing level. There's two flavors of this steroid llama. You got the dromedary, which has one hump, and the bacterium, which nature somehow gave two. Not nearly enough people know just how big they can get. The most brolic bacterium can weigh over 2,200 pounds and be seven and a half feet at the shoulder. If you rear end a moose, you're probably losing your life, but at least the casket can be opened. You probably don't get an open casket if the cause of death is a camel. One man in India accidentally left his camel tied up outside during a heat wave, and he rushed to go untie it. To get revenge, the camel suplexed him and then decapitated him by chewing on his neck until his head and body were divorced. Oh, you don't believe me. Google it. I'm not going anywhere. Because even though camels eat grass and grains, nature gave them a meat eater's mouthpiece as a sick joke. The canine teeth helps them crush woody plants. But it also means if a camel bites you, that's a part of you you are just not getting back. Also, they have flesh teeth. This is what their mouth looks like. Their mouth is covered in papillae, which helps them force food down their throat. Technically not harmless, but this image isn't. Also, they can run you down at 40 miles per hour, and I don't think they get enough credit for that. Those sharp toenails that protect them from hot shifting sand can also shatter your ribcage with one kick. Nature gave them every possible way to put people on t-shirts and made it everyone else's problem. Also, they can swim and they're very good at it. K-ray camels are a type of dromedary that can quite literally pull up on you in the ocean. Moral of this video, whoever designed camels was fresh out of to give. Alright, so moose drop their antlers every year but grow them back in the spring because they use them to flex for females. And at first, the antlers grow inside this soft skin with tiny hairs called velvet. But eventually, the moose has a surge of testosterone where they basically become 7 foot frat boys on spring break. That's when the velvet sheds and the bones of the antlers harden. The velvet stays on the antlers for about 3 to 4 months until the moose rubs up against trees and bushes to remove them. Which is why they look like they bundied somebody. As much of a hate crime as this looks like, it doesn't hurt the moose at all and it's a lot like snakes shedding their skin. If anything, it's more like an annoying itch. Also, when a bull moose wants to pull a female, they use cologne just like you and me. Except their version involves digging a pit, peeing into the pit, and then rubbing and splashing the golden pool all over their antlers the R. Kelly way. Clearly they know what they're doing because smelling liquid sunshine causes the female moose to ovulate because nature's just weird like that.